Hi, and welcome to the farm. The bottle whim, she's right where we left her. For the delivery people, they've been really busy. We've got a lot of parts. We've got a lot of stuff to work on. So finish off that cappuccino. Let's get to work. Oh, that is good. Are you ready? All right, let's get to it. The work on the carburetor makes for a long, long video. So I've decided to summarize it here and I'll release a dedicated video to rebuilding the carburetor later on in the year. The important thing is uh, the car was disassembled and in the process, this happened. Yep. Yeah, that's right. The main needle broke in two. I've never heard of something like this happen, but you know, it's right there in front of me. That's what it is. Then the main jet or emulsion tube, whatever you want to call it, was stuck. And I'm convinced that someone used a thread locker, epoxy, concrete, the force, something. Because everything fought me tooth and nail all the way on this carb. I tried drilling it out, hammering in an extractor, but that just resulted in me breaking my, all my extractors. And, uh, and ultimately it would just carve out the brass until eventually there's no brass. And I was just afraid that I was going to dig into the threads. Well, at that point, I took it over to my, to my brother-in-law's shop to drill it out and tap it. As it turned out, we didn't use a big enough drill bit, and even though we tapped it to the correct size, there was too much metal in the middle for the tube to go all the way through. So I wound up stepping up 1 64th bigger and retapping. As an aside, I had no idea that there was a size qubit, not to be confused with a Hubert. Anyway, next was the idle jet. And again, it was just glued in place. It would not come out. I even hit it with map gas and tried to, uh, to break it free with heat. But there was just no, it was just not going to break free. It just wasn't going to cooperate. Now then, while our carburetor cools off in the sun, we're going to take and pull the uh, radiator. Get ready to pull the hydraulic pump out of this thing. That didn't feel good. What's that all about? Oh, there's a nut on the back side. Not captured. And before I take this last screw out, I'm gonna dump the water out of it. it needs to be flushed anyway. And this one has a Jubilee clamp on it, so I assume that it has come off in more recent times. And let's see if we can give her a little tap and maybe to move. That's a little better. That's a little, that's a little something. And don't worry, this is just water. This is 100% what I put in last week. A little bit of wiggle much but a little bit there we go come on girl let it go yeah I, I, I think that's fine and you loosen that top hose a little bit I'm sure that won't be a problem at all It does look like it's been replaced more recently. You can't see it from over there, but trust me, the uh, Jubilee clamps are really new. Hose is not, the clamps are. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I just put this in here last week. I did not put it in there that hard. Mm. Well, that's unfortunate.
All right, let's try this again. Oops, not break off like my last set of wrenches. Oh, that's not the right size, is it? Drive it all the way in there. There we go. I think there's a key in here too we have to watch out for. Because we need that to make it work in the future. Oop, there you go. There she goes. She's hot. Hot. I don't know why it's so dang hot. It's not like somebody put a torch on it or anything. That'd be ridiculous. I think you missed all of the consternation of removing the radiator because I forgot to push the record button. But the condition of our core is very good. I suspect it has been replaced. Nobody takes that good care of a tractor radiator. Alright, so I went in take a look at the drawing on this hydraulic pump because there's no obvious uh, indication of how this thing's actually held to the body of the tractor. From the exploited diagram it looks like this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt go all the way through the pump and hold the pump to the chassis or to the engine block, sorry, <clears throat> and that this one, this one, and that one just hold the pump together. That's the assumption that I'm going on. You guys could probably see, I couldn't, that the actual fitting is turning through and through from the pump and not the, the fitting is not coming apart. Why didn't y'all tell me? Oh yeah, well, there we go. Yeah, that's nicely rounded off for future Mike to deal with. So I'm going to take and loosen this end of the uh, hydraulic hose so that uh, I can just twist it out of the way on the other end. You don't need to take it all the way off, just loosen it. All right, we'll give these a shot. Yeah. That wasn't so bad. Go, 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 go with it. Yeah, somebody decided to paint everything. This is one that I suspect to be. This is one that I suspect to actually hold the thing into place. I bet I'm going to take the fan and that belt off to get that thing to slide out of there. Because I bet it's got to come out this way to release from the... I believe it's coming off the camshaft. So I believe it has to come forward to come off the camshaft. Oh, man. Might as well do it. It's a really bizarre way of putting a, a fan on, but hey, you know, work with what you got. Interesting. Oh, that is weird. I assume that's like a kind of clutch. Or really clutch mechanism. All right, got it. Get you guys. I'm just gonna get you guys in here to go get this. All right. It looks like we have holes in here, but then this, it looks like 
This piece is not attached to the shaft at all. This piece rotates. Wow. Interesting. I had hoped to just be able to slip this belt off the, uh, the pulley here, but that's not going to happen. So i got to go through the process of loosening this, but it is going to be very difficult to get to. Should I take the breather off, and the air, air cleaner off to get more room? I believe I should. This is the front of the tractor, if you can't tell from the context here. Um, and it is really really windy. So I may wind up having to dub all this over. Emma, you came off. I know you go back on. Oh, there we go. Oh, and it's got a wheel in it. Excellent. Happy tap. See what happens here. It appears to have moved. <laughs> Ew, that needs cleaning. The entire coolant system is going to need a. This is a flush with a scrub. All right. So in here is the nut. Pretty sure it's supposed to be smaller than that, smaller this way, not as a as tall of a of a nut, and it's hitting the housing, the in the actual casting of the block back here, and not letting it go all the way down, so that I can take the belt, the belt off of here. So I think what I have to do here is take this nut all the way off. There's a lot of disassembly, a lot more than I had bargained for with this. And this is still in my way. I'm going to pull that pin. Okay, now we can actually th start thinking about uh, taking the hydraulic pump off. Over to the drawings and the shop manual on this past couple of days. The shop manual describes taking this apart on the tractor, which I find to be weird, but it never describes taking it off the tractor. And the exploited diagram never shows anything inside here. Thank you, Rocky. Uh, shows nothing inside here holding the, the, like the back end or the middle into the block. I suspect only these three longer bolts do. But I can find nothing definitive on it. So the only thing we can do is crack it open. Now the shop manual does describe taking this thing apart by tapping it with a with a, uh, a rawhide mallet, which I don't have. Pretty sure these two don't go all the way through, but they may. Let's find out. It did go all the way through. There we go. Huh. Ugh. Yep, that's nice. Right on, right on my drill. Okay, to the bench with you. All right, so just for the record, we have three screws that come all the way through and one index point, it looks like. 
Here we go. Ah, I can hold it up here where you guys can see. This one, this one, and this one. Go all the way through into the block. So before I went to lunch, I took this outside and I, I cleaned it up. So all I did was just scrub all of the oil and grease and muck and mire off this thing so that we can see what we got to work with. And uh, she still held together quite well with no screws in her. I think this will work. That's not working. Well, let's hit it with a hammer. Okay, that works. Okay, a little bit of separation here. I think we're stuck on this dowel right here. I don't have any drift pins, but uh, this little guy right here should help. Just give a little... It's not a good way to, to hold this thing. Yeah, that slipped a little bit. Okay. I want to be real careful reaching into these surfaces because they need to be uh, very precise and I don't want to scratch them up. So that side here is already past my dial, this side is not. There we go, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. All right, so here are our gear pumps. Um, if we flip this over, we'll see the one, nice, <clears throat> the one on my left is the one being driven by the, I'll just slide that right back in there. <clears throat> this one is the one that's being driven by the camshaft. And there are there's two in the gear, but there's one keyway on the shaft. The this shaft here, this shaft is driven. Right there, so I want to keep these separate so I know which ones are which. Well, that was far more difficult than it should have been. But we can see our our three components of the casing, both our gears, the drive shaft and the idler shaft. Shouldn't be too bad. Pull up our seat. Ooh, yeah, she was brittle. Pull up that seal. Get that other seal out. Yeah, 
our seal does not, <laughs> it's not, not uh, looking very good. Budging. Again, I think somebody's glued everything together with concrete in this tractor. There go my needle valves. My, uh, my needle bearings. Sorry. Not needle valves, needle bearings. Did I get the wrong bit? No, I didn't. Well, I haven't planned on replacing that, but it looks like I will now. There we go. Alright, so the seal's out. And yeah, it's got some kind of goop on it. I was never going to never going to turn out well. So now, I suppose, I'm going to use my brother's press and press that out and order a new one. And we won't be fixing this thing until, uh, until I get more parts in. Yay! More parts! The carb reassembly went really smooth. In fact, it was the only part of this whole process that did go smooth. The only issues that came up were discrepancies between the drawings and the parts supplied. Basically, the drawings and the shop manuals called for packing on both the throttle and the choke shaft seals, but the kit came with two rubber seals and one felt seal. After reading a bunch of forum posts and piecing together what they said, kind of with the parts that I got, I kind of decided, well, the felt seal, I'll put that on the choke shaft and the two rubber seals, I'll stack them together and put them on the throttle shaft. It could be wrong, but if it works, is it really wrong? I installed the carburetor late last night, but I uh, didn't have a chance to see if it works. I did hook up the gas. Uh, other than the old fitting on the old line, there's no leaks. Seems to hold fuel just fine. Uh, the floats appear to work properly. It doesn't leak fuel out of the, uh, the intake. So uh, let's tickle it with some electrons and see what happens. Let's see a little bit of choke. Start a wire over here. Hold on. All right, I don't want to run it too much. Uh, it is leaking oil out the front uh, because hydraulic pumps off and exposes some of the oil passageways. The reassembly of the hydraulic pump is rather simple as the, as the pump itself is rather simple. One of the most important things is to have a work surface that is both clean and can get oily. As you assemble the pump, you should have a small cup or bowl of hydraulic fluid nearby. Coat, cover, and soak everything in oil. When you first start this thing up, it's going to have, I don't know, six, seven feet worth of pipe that's got to draw that fluid through before it gets any lubrication. And plus, most of these pumps can't even draw a suction without some kind of fluid in the pump itself to make the seal. Oh, dang it. So at times like this when you realize you've forgotten the blasted seal, you idiot. Oh yeah, and don't forget to put the seals in the casing components before you put it back together because it, you know, otherwise you just have to take it all back apart. In the eye, in the eye. I may have said this at some other point in this video, but if I were to take one of these pumps apart again, I'd try driving out the dowel pins. Uh, they were just a constant source of sorrow in both the disassembly and the reassembly of this pump. 
I don't know if it'd be any easier, but I doubt seriously that it could be any worse. All right, we got our pump reassembled. Let's get the sucker back on. Fork. I've never done that one before. I assembled it with enough oil. It should be able to uh, create its own uh, suction pressure inside there. But just in case, I'm going to prime it a little bit. Go. Ooh, hi there. Well, you need to coat the pump and the front of the tractor with uh, enough hydraulic fluid to, you know. Okay. According to the service manual, there's only three and a half quarts in this thing. And it does call this the fill hole, fill slash vent. We'll see about that. Well, there's some. There's some more. Some more still. And even more. All right, let's give it a shot and see if it sprays hydraulic fuel everywhere. There are some things you just shouldn't say out loud. A little bit of gas. Till it leaks. Check the neutral. That's good. I'm not even going to bother choking it. Contact. <laughs> Contact. Maybe I'll watch it. Contact. Smell. Smell gas. Lost spark again. We took this off for safety a minute ago while we're manually turning the engine and safety. <clears throat> Contact. Whoa. Yep. Pump works. Where are you coming from? Obviously a disconnected line somewhere, but where? Uh, uh. Oh. Okay. 
Get you guys in here and take a look at this. So a problem. If I can get you guys in here. That bit of hose right there is supposed to be attached to this bit of hose over here. So there's about uh, two inches of pipe, hard pipe, that is missing. So that means a few more days, I'll order another pipe. Well, it's another day. Got the pipe in from Sharps. Uh, they're about the last company on the planet making these things. Uh, they're not a sponsor. They're just like the last ones available. There's a lot left to do on this thing. Pretty much all the wiring. Got to clean up the uh, dash before I can put that pipe in. Hand meter. Hand meter. Busted. Uh, that's got to be replaced. I don't have it yet. Uh, battery cables all the wiring, spark plug wires, fuel tank. It's a lot left to do on this thing. So I'm going to cut it off here. Until next time, thanks for joining me on the farm.